Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iwineradio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there. Hi, this is Bob Bedford, uh, publisher of, uh, co-publisher and founder of uh, Hudson Valley Wine Magazine, and you can find more about us at www.hbwinemag.com. Hello, my name is Linda Piero, managing editor of Hudson Valley Wine Magazine, promoting the Hudson Valley wine region in New York State. You can find out more about us at www.hvwinemag.com. <music> Welcome to Wine and Dine Radio. I'm Lynn Crelo Chamberlain. Hi there. This is Andreas Larson. Hi, this is John Capon. My name is Mathur Jaffrey. Hi, my name is Heike Platter. I'm from the Alto Adige region or Südtirol. Hi, my name is Paul Dolan. I am absolutely passionate about growing organic and biodynamic fruit for our wines. Hello, my name is Lorena Garcia. Hello, my name is Fritz Maytag. This is Joyce Bach. I'm the author of Foodie Fight. Hi, this is Lydia Mandavi, founder of 29 Cosmetics. Cheers, this is Rob Barnett, CEO and founder of ThinVillage.com, where wine lovers connect. Today on Wine and Dine, we are going to talk to the founders of the Hudson Valley Wine Magazine. Now, if you live uh, near Hudson Valley or New York City or, you know, that, that general vicinity, two or three hours Radius, you I'm sure are are you know familiar with Hudson Valley Wine Magazine, but for people who don't live there, perhaps you're not, and we're going to give you some reasons to be including wine and and spirits and even artisanal beer producers into your itinerary. Robert Bedford is the executive editor, and Linda Piero is the publisher and managing editor, and they're both joining us today. And we thank you so very much for your time. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. So um, give us some history, if you would, please, about the magazine. And also, I thought it was so interesting that, it, that I was reading from you also that the history of Hudson Valley AVA is very significant. Right. Well, Bob can tell you more about the AVA, but as far as the magazine, uh, we started the magazine in 2008 sort of as a response to... Um, people just not really knowing that the area has existed for as long as it has as an AVA. Um, we've been actually making wine for many, many years in the region, with Brotherhood Winery being the oldest one in the country, starting in 1839. So uh, we have a long history of people making wine, but not everyone knew about it, uh, especially people even living in the area. There are these little jewels and wineries sort of tucked away on these dusty dirt roads and... Um, you know, people just weren't uh, aware. So we decided to start the magazine as a way to um, bring people up to the region and to enjoy the area. So, and, and Bob, before you start, Linda, how many wineries are in the Hudson Valley AVA at present? Well, um, over 30. It's, it increases every year. I mean, it's, it's amazing what we've seen in just the past five years since we started. Uh, with more and more wineries coming on board, there's a, a, a total resurgence uh, for people looking for artisanal wines, for you know, wanting to meet the winemakers and learn more about making wine. Um, there's a real passion. Um, along with the food um, producers that are here, it's a really great pairing. We have lots of great cheese producers, and with the wine, the cheese, we've got the distillers and the breweries 
too. So it's really a burgeoning region. So, Robert, tell us about the, the history of the AVA. Well, the, uh, you know, as Linda was saying, the history goes back probably the farthest in the country, certainly when, uh, you know, it was being uh, colonized or settled back in the 1600s. Uh, they found grapes here, and as the Huguenots, the French Huguenots, the German Palatines, uh, they all settled in this early uh, Dutch-owned region. Um, they saw the grapes and the abundance there and, and said, what a beautiful place, let's, let's plant uh, more vines and let's make more wine. Um, but it didn't work out as well as they planned, obviously. Uh, everyone knows that the pitfalls of trying to grow vinifera in the North America. Yeah. And um, that evolved to lots of experimentation in the Hudson Valley and a lot of um, new vineyards uh, growing local grapes. And uh, many of those just continuous, continued on into the early 20th century. And uh, as, as Linda said, too, Brotherhood Winery uh, is uh, the oldest continuously operated winery in the United States and the North America region. Uh, started in 1839, and a lot of experimentation went on here, too, as they tried to figure out, certainly, um, why you can't grow vinifera, but what can you grow. And so a lot of uh, hybridizing, uh, some of the earliest hybridizing attempts happened in the, the Hudson, Hudson Valley. Valley. Now, uh, and throw out, because this was really interesting, that it's the eighth AVA in the United States after Napa, but before Sonoma? Uh, yes, <laughs> it was... Uh, Certainly recognized in the, the early days of uh, this whole region, uh, the Finger Lakes as well, and, you know, the Ohio uh, Valley, were well, one of the earliest uh, settlements for the wineries. And um, it was, was acknowledged uh, because after Prohibition, or when they just started to, you know, acknowledge the fact that wineries were not going to go away, yeah. um, they realized here was a region already operating and existing. And so we are eighth on the list. But uh, I think it's a bit outdated. A lot of people will uh, tell you that uh, the wineries now, the strict Hudson River AVA um, follows, you know, the, the set path, but a lot of the wineries that have been burgeoning lately are just a little bit out of the official designation. Okay. They all are part of the Hudson Valley wineries. Oh, wow. So Okay, so we mentioned, uh, Linda, you said about 30 and growing wineries, how many uh, distillers are in the area and how many breweries are in the area? Well, the first um, distiller in the area right after the laws change was Tuttletown, um, and they're in Gardner, which is pretty much right smack in the middle of the Hudson Valley region. Um, then we've got uh, Harvest came on board, um, and you have to remember also that in the Hudson Valley area there is a, a ton of fruit. I mean, we're known for apples and pears and all sorts of um, Fruit production here was really big, um, you know, for, you know, in the 1800s, bringing it down to Manhattan, New York City. Um, so a lot of people are distilling um, from local fruits. So, okay. for instance, Harvest Spirits um, distills apples. They have a huge apple orchard, and their vodka, all of their products are made from apples. So it's really interesting. So, yeah, we've got Tuttletown Harvest. Um, Warwick Valley is also a winery, but they've been distilling. A few of the other wineries um, have... Uh, distilling equipment, so they're starting to get on board with the distilling. And right now we've got about seven uh, distillers operating in the Hudson Valley region. And Robert, how many breweries are there? Oh, that's a good question. Um, there's, actually, I can't give you an exact number. There's just so many have been popping up lately um, that I don't have a full count. But, but yeah, like uh, more than half a dozen? Oh, yeah, oh definitely. Certainly. certainly. Okay. Uh, the range is probably in the uh, teens and twenties. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things that's kind of interesting for that I want people to know is how, how they can get a, a copy of the Hudson Valley Wine Magazine. And obviously, if they live in the area, they're they're going to easily be able to get it. But if you're going to mail it, there's a, a, a fee, right? Right. Um, you can go to our website, www.hcwinemag.com, and um, there's a subscribe now. It's two issues per year, so okay. it's... Um, the next issue will be out in uh, late May, so you can be the first on the block to get an issue if you subscribe. And, uh, and then the following issue is in the fall. So we're really a resource guide where people will look to us and they refer to us over and over again when they want to go and visit the wineries, the breweries, and the distilleries because all of the information, the profiles of the wineries um, are in there, and it will give you ideas on what else you can do while you're visiting the region. 
and what's the f- size of the magazine? Is it like eight and a half by eleven or no? It's it's really it's large. It's nine by thirteen. So it's actually okay. a coffee a coffee table magazine. Okay. It's uh, you know people have told me they like to keep them out in their living rooms because they look so pretty. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's something that you refer to over and over again, and uh, all of our advertisers love them because it brightens up their you know their their lobbies and their tasting rooms, and um, they're very popular. So how, how many, where do people work who live in Hudson Valley? I mean, if New York City is an hour drive away, I think I read, then do, do people make that kind of commute or do people have country homes in Hudson Valley or, or what's the demographic like out there? Well, we do have um, really a mix. We do have people who are just weekenders uh, who just come up and have a second home here. Um, and you'll find, I mean, the river really attracts people. It's just beautiful, lush land, you know, rolling hills, just gorgeous scenery. Um, you know, uh, the region is also known for the painters, the Hudson River School. It's where it started in Catskill. Um, so we've got, you know, this great history of art and wine in the region. Um, and there's a reason for it because it's, it's, it's a beautiful place to visit um, and to live. And so we have people who come up from the city. We have people who come down from North um, Albany. Obviously, with the um, the government seat being in Albany, there's a big um, that's a large um, area where people might work. Um, and then okay. everyone else. I mean, there's so many so many other industries in the region where people might work. Can I ask also? Uh, let me see. What the heck was I just looking at? Oh yeah, but Bob, am I too late to be throwing out? that you're a sponsor of the Crown Maple Wine, Cider, and Maple Fest Bounty? I mean, w- w- what's going on? Is there a crossover between maple syrup and wine? <laughs> well, I'm going to let Linda answer that one. Well, actually, um, that event was scheduled to be in November, last November, and then oh. unfortunately Sandy hit. So okay. uh, we had to uh, put that aside, and we're trying to regroup and have it um, this year instead. But, okay. um, yeah, there's a lot of maple trees in the region, and, um, and they've tapped into it. And we're, uh, if, if it does happen this year, which I'll let people know on our website, okay. um, there will be a connection definitely between wine and maple. So in addition to the two printings of the, of the magazine, are there also uh, updates on the website about new events that crop up in between printings? Yes, and uh, we also have an e-newsletter that we're starting up this year that will come out um, to subscribers four times a year, so that will give everyone sort of little inside information in between issues. And you can sign up on our website as well. Okay. Wow. Well, this is really exciting. I um, I, uh, I would like to visit Hudson Valley one time here. and uh, and. uh, but we're going to continue this conversation with a with a distiller after we hang up from uh, Tut Hill Town. Thanks to you. Well, this has been wonderful. I would uh, I would like to invite as you know future ideas if there are uh, chefs or or people who write books about Hudson Valley or or whatever. Let's keep the conversation going on wine and dine about the Hudson Valley Wine ABA. Okay. Great. Right. Great. So I'd like to thank Robert Bedford, the executive editor, and Linda Piero, publisher and managing editor of Hudson Valley Wine Magazine, for joining us today on Wine and Dine. To learn more about the Hudson Valley Wine Magazine, you can log on to hvwinemag.com. And I thank you for listening to Wine and Dine. Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iWineRadio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. 
And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iwineradio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us, and we'll go from there.